So a very good evening to everyone and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Nicholas, the president of the Taylor's Lakeside Pre-Medical Club, and I'm glad to invite three medical students at the Shanghai Jiao Tong University, Xianping, Xinyi, and Ziwei. They'll give us information on the university itself, applications, and medicine in China in general. So thank you once again for being here, and without further ado, I'd like to pass on to Xianping. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. So first of all, thank you for coming to this sharing sh session. Also, thank you Taylor Premed Society for hosting this. My name is Xianping, one of the international ambassadors of Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Today, my friends and I will be talking about the study life at SJTU and also SJTU School of Medicine. Uh, next page. Uh, next page. Oh, okay. Uh, I will start with a simple team introduction. My name is Chiu Xianping. You can just call me Chris. I'm a second year medical student at Shanghai Jiao Tong University School of Medicine. I came from A level background and I did my A level in Sunway College. Uh, I will now invite my teammate to introduce themselves too. So let's start from Xin Yi and follow by Zi Wei. <laughs> Hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is Jing Yi and I'm also a second year student of uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University School of Medicine and I came from Pinhua High School. Uh, next, Zi Wei. Hi everyone, I'm Zi Wei. I'm currently a first year medical student in Shanghai Jiao Tong Medical uh, University and uh, previously I did my A-levels in Taylor's College. Thank you. Mm, okay. So now, uh, let us welcome Zi Wei to first introduce Shanghai and also SJTU to you. Uh, I will pass the mic to Zi Wei now. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Chris. Oh, next page. Uh, for my part, I'll talk a little bit about Shanghai and introduce you uh, about Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Okay, next page. Shanghai is one of the eight Alpha Plus cities in the world, a diverse, vibrant, modernized, and international metropolis. It is also one of the safest cities in the world and a city full of opportunities. Okay, next page. Uh, about Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Next. Our university is founded in 1896. It is the, the oldest university in China and also one of the most prestigious universities in China. It is a comprehensive, research-oriented, and internationalized university. All right, next. Okay, here are some of the notable ac accomplishments by our uni, uh, which includes nuclear submarine, space rocket, gasoline engine, uh, hovercraft, Deep sea rescue vehicle, man made, man made satellite, aircraft carrier, and we are also the first in China to do the autotropic liver transplant and also rescue patients with extensive burns. Okay, next. So, our university has successfully cultivated over 300,000 outstanding talents and alumni. We have four alumni alumni who won the State Supreme Science and Technology Award, and also 14 alumni are U.S. academicians. We have one-fourth of our alumni are now working or studying in the overseas. Next. So here are some of our well-known alumni in science, politics, art, and business. Uh, the first one in the picture is Qian Xuesheng. He is the father of China space program. And the second one is Lu Yet. She is an actress and also the Oscar judge. And Jiang Zeming is our former president of China. And the fourth one is Yang Yuanqing. He is the CEO of Lenovo. And I guess everyone knows the last one. He is Yao Ming and he is also the former NBA player and president of Asian Basketball Confederation. Okay, next. Here are some of our alumni from our medical school, which uh, includes Wang Zhenyi, a hematologist and also the State Premium Science and Technology Award winner in 2010, and Chen Zhu, 
He is also a hematologist and also a molecular biologist. He's current he's the current minister of Ministry of Health of China. And uh, the third one is Lars Montignier. He is a full-time professor in Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and he's also awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 2008. The last one is Chen Mingzhang. He is the former Minister of Ministry of Health of China. Okay, next. So, uh, here are all of our campus. We have six campus in total, which includes Minghang Campus, Xihui Campus, Changning Campus, Qibao campus and Huangpu campus and Putong campus. And Huangpu campus belongs to our medical school. All right, next. Here is our 2021 QS World Ranking. And uh, we are ranked 47 this year in the world and 10 in Asia and 4th in China. Yeah, next. So uh, we have also listed the rankings by subject uh, in 2020. Uh, med our medicine course is ranked 51 to 100 in the world. And I would like to mention here that we have 12 subjects are ranked in the top 50 in 2020. Yeah. Uh, next. So uh, here you can have a glimpse on our campus surrounding. Uh, the first picture is actually our canteen. Uh, it's a very big one, obviously. And then uh, Timo Coffee is uh, one of the cafe in our, in our campus. And the third picture is our teaching building. And the fourth one is the main library in Minghang campus. Okay, next. So uh, students in our university do not need to worry about their transportation, actually, because um, the metro station is, is just five minutes walk from our school. And as you can see from the map, there's a red and purple line. Uh, it's actually the subway road. So uh, it's very near our school. So uh, students can just travel here and there by taking the subway. Okay, next. So this is a picture of our campus plan. Uh, it is 4,638.7 acres of campus. And I guess uh, every, uh, students in our school can really enjoy their campus life a lot. <laughs> yeah, and next slide. This is some of our campus facilities. And we have a sport center in our campus. Uh, inside the sport center, we have an indoor badminton court, indoor basketball court, and also an indoor uh, table tennis court. Uh, as you can see, the third one is our athletic track, and we also have a gymnasium in our, our school. Uh, inside the gymnasium, we have a swimming pool. And also in the fifth picture is an uh, outdoor tennis court. Yeah, next. So uh, here is our campus library. We have a total of six libraries. And actually, right, we have one, uh, our university have one of the biggest library system in Shanghai and a total of six libraries, and it occupies a total area of 61,700 meters square. So uh, the first one in the picture is school, our School of Medicine Library, and the second one is Pao Yue Kong Library. The third one is the main library in Minghang Campus, and the fourth and sixth one is uh, in our Shihui Campus. It's the Shihui Campus Library, and also a closed stack building at Shihui Campus. For the fifth one is the Xiongdao Li Library. So uh, besides reading and learning, what can we do in our library? Uh, you can also visit exhibition in our library because uh, our library often uh, organizes a variety of exhibition to enrich the students' vision and widen their horizon. If you wanted to have a break in the library, you can also go to, the, uh, to have a movie or sing karaoke in the library. In the library. Uh, our library has the space for it. Uh, when it comes to academic, our library also provides students with research support, such as citation search, sci-tech novel novelty retrieval service, infometrics, pattern information service, and several research tools. So uh, students really should uh, make good use of our library. Yeah, next.
And yeah, as you can see just now, uh, we have a really huge campus. So our school actually provides us e-bike to rent by day, by month, or by semester, so that students can use the use the e-bike to travel from block to block around the campus. So it's more convenient to use the e-bike actually. Yeah, next. In Shanghai Jiao Tong University, international students have lots of activities to take part to. Uh, one of them is the 24 festive drum. This drum team is actually established by our Malaysian international students. In the, in the picture, you can see that uh, they are having a training and also uh, performances in different events. Uh, the drum team is actually quite famous in our uni. So uh, if anyone of you is interested in our drum team, uh, feel free to join them when you are enrolled in our uni in the future. Next. So uh, as an international student in Shanghai Jiao Tong University, you can also join the International Student Society's event such as Christmas night, Halloween night, uh, freshman's welcome party, and also lots of volunteer program to join. And also the culture exhibition. Uh, the culture exhibition is actually one of those uh, very interesting uh, event held by the International Student Society yearly, where students will set up their booth and uh, exhibit their culture to others. Yeah, next. Okay, uh, here comes to the academic part. So our uni not only provides a degree program to the students, we also provide pre-U program to the students. Uh, allow me to briefly introduce you the pre-U program of our school. Our pre-U program is divided into program A and program B. For program A, it's for candidates with better Chinese language, but needs impro improvement in subjects like English, math, to meet the entry requirement of the, the degree program. While for program B, it's for candidates without Chinese language basic and also needs improvement in subjects like English and math to meet the entry requirement. So uh, for both programs, the entry requirement is the same, which is students have to be between 17 years old to 23 years old and have to be a high school graduate. Uh, however, the program duration for program A is only one year, while for program B is two years. Both of them, uh, both of the program is teaching in Chinese. And the fee for program B is actually twice the fee for program A. So if anyone of you is interested to apply our pre-U program, you can go and visit to our official website. And friendly reminder here, our application deadline is on the 15th of January, 2022. Okay, next. So uh, here are some of our accommodation fee listed down. Uh, you can have a look if uh, if you you are wondering about the uh, accommodation fee. Next. Oh, and here are some of our accommodation pictures. For the first one is uh, for the first picture is the washing machine room, and students usually wash their clothes and belongings here. And uh, for the second picture, it's actually a common area for international students to hang around or carry out some activities. So um, for the third and fourth picture is, uh, is the picture of our international students' dormitory. Okay, next. So in our school, uh, we have lots of curricular activities for students to join too. We have clubs and also, um, and also the sport teams. So here are some of the clubs I have listed down which includes street dance, racing car, field survival, drama, photography, and also piano. Yeah, next. Well, for the sport teams, uh, we have baseball team, football team, basketball team, table tennis team, volleyball team, and also rowing team. Next. So uh, for my sharing, uh, I'll end here and... Thank you for listening. I'll pass the mic to Xian Ping. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ziwei. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Chris. So now let me just talk about the School of Medicine, SJTU SM. Uh, next page. Okay. Okay. Uh, so SJTU SM is originally a France university, and after several merging processes, it eventually becomes Shanghai Jiao Tong University School of Medicine. 
Uh, it is formally approved under 211 project as a state key university, giving a guarantee that students studying over here can actually receive all-round development in medical education, clinical services, and also scientific researches. Uh, next page. Uh, so now, let us take a look at the ranking of SJTU SM. So in 2020, we are actually ranked top in China, uh, which is known as the best medical school nationally in China. Uh, next. Our campus is separated into two main areas, the East Campus and also the West Campus. Over here in our campus, we have lots of facilities that are free to use, for example, gymnasium, basketball court, dance room, IT facilities, etc. We also have a two-floor canteen with lots of delicious Chinese food and also a Western bakery. Uh, in our canteen, we do provide halal food so all the Muslim students can enjoy the food in, in the campus as well. Uh, next. A uh, so affiliated hospital is actually one of the main indicator to indicate the strength of a medical school. Uh, if you have more, let's say if you have more affiliated hospital, that means you are going to get more research output and also more learning opportunities. So over here, SJTU SM has a total of 13 affiliated hospitals and all the affiliated hospitals are actually well known in China in different fields. And among all of this, the first one, Ruizing Hospital, is actually uh, is currently known as the best affiliated hospital of SJTU. It is also constantly ranked as the top five hospital in China throughout the years. One good thing about uh, this is when all the international students are going for internship, we will be definitely assigned to Ruizing Hospital, which is one of the benefits of us as international students studying in China and also studying in SJTU. Uh, next. So now let us take a look at our campus. As you see, the buildings are all using the team color of brick red color. Like what I said before, because SJTU SM is originally a France university, so the buildings are actually somehow keeping some of the elements from other countries. Uh, next. Uh, let me now talk about the campus life. So people might say, uh, yeah, if you study medicine, your life must be very boring. But I would say it is absolutely not true because I still see a lot of my friends over here are actually enjoying their life very much. So it really depends on how you are going to spend your time over here. Um, so over here in SJTU SM, we actually have a lot of events throughout the years. So if you are free, you are always welcome to participate in it. Uh, next. First and foremost, let me just talk about the accommodation. So we have a total of three international dormitories for international students. Um, so among all of this, the guest block will be the one with the best facilities and also best looking, but it's only a sign for female students for now. And the room will be twin room. Uh, that means there will be one to two people assigned to each room. And normally the students with the same nationality will live together unless you make some um special request for the facilities right we have free wi-fi bathroom and also kitchen and most importantly all the electric and water are actually free to use without having any charge so that means you can that means like you can actually open your aircon for 24 hours without getting any extra charges so and this is what i like the most about our accommodate accommodation right now uh next And here are, the some, here are some of the pictures of our dormitories. As you see, you can design your table as you want. Uh, we have kitchen, bathroom, and toilet for each floor. We also have a discussion room for people to discuss on their group assignment. Uh, apart from this, we also have a study room for people to do revision. So if you go there at midnight, you will probably still see some of the hardworking students studying over there. Uh, next. Here's a look at our, at our societies. Um, the people you see over here are actually all medical students. So this is what's so special about the societies in our school. Because all the societies are actually composed by medical students. So that all of us are actually sharing this, uh, the common topics or common interests. Uh, next.
In the society, my school is separated into four main categories, academics, volunteering, culture and art, and sport and fitness. So you can basically choose whichever you like. Most events are free, but some of the sports society, you will need to pay for the shirt or the equipments. Normally, the price is quite friendly, like, in my opinion. Uh, next. Okay, uh, now let me just talk about my campus life. So every year, uh, the School of Medicine will actually organize sport day for all the medical students over here. And every time international students were actively involved in this, and I actually participated in this last time as well, and we often obtain a very good result for each category. I also joined dance society and learned hip hop, uh, and then done with my first stage performance in China. Uh, during my free time, I also go for lab visit. Um, this is so. This is the lab under collaboration with Yale University, and after this session, I really learned a lot from it. Uh, especially in terms of researching skills and also researching opportunities. Uh, after that, I do actively participate in International Collaboration Society to organize a series of academic events. And I met a lot of new friends over, over here. And this is the picture took when all the committee are having a picnic together as a team building event. Uh, last but not least, I also enjoy using my time to go into research projects, learning how to seek for a scientific problem and also solve the problem scientifically. Uh, next. Okay, so right now I'm going to talk about the course. So our course is actually known, uh, it's actually called clinical medicine. So our clinical medicine program is a five years program. It is recognized by MMC, which means if you want to work back in Malaysia, you don't need to take any examination. You can just directly go back and apply for a housemanship. And currently, uh, the only university that got recognized by Malaysia in China are uh, our school, SJTU, and Fudan University. So the first year of your study will be uh, pre-med education, which you will get to study some of the basic subjects like physics, calculus, and chemistry. Then second year, you will get exposed to some of the subjects like anatomy, pathology, etc. Then third year, you will be entering clinical phase and learn everything system by system and then go into internship in year five. The, the course will be mainly taught in Chinese. However, as what you see at the right side, medical terminology in English is somehow required to know too. First, some of the examination will even have some English questions to test on us. So during our first year, we will be studying, studying together with all the international students alone, and then start from second year onwards, then all of us will be studying together with the Chinese students. Uh, next page. Uh, here's the list of the subjects that you are going to learn in first and second years. So during the first year, you will be learning most of the pre-med subjects like calculus, physics, and chemistry. You will also be learning Chinese language and also survey in China to, to ensure students from different ed educational backgrounds can actually uh, adapt the Chinese study environment. We also learn special subjects like programming and database retrieving skills that are very useful in researching field. And then in second year, we learn subjects that are more medical related, including pathology, biochemistry, pharmacology, etc. We also started to learn regional anatomy, which we will have the opportunity to actually uh, dissect the cadaver to study the body structure. We also learn medical English to ensure that we are capable of speaking or applying the knowledge bilingually. Uh, one thing special about our course is that uh, apart from all of this, we have lots of integrated costs like molecule, cell, and tissue. So this is a subject that compiles uh, different subjects like cell biology, molecular biology, histology, together with physiology, so that we get to know the how the physiological process takes place in each type of cell, which I think is very interesting to know. That. And then start from third year, like what I said before, we will then enter clinical phase and learn everything by system, then go on with internship on year five. Uh, next page. Okay, so due to COVID situation, we are having online learning right now because we are unable to return back to China. So the 
So the platform we use is a pla is an online platform called Chowsing. And basically the teacher will create folder for each subject and then upload the lecture videos into the folder. You can watch the video repeatedly if you don't understand. And this is one of the good thing about online learning. It is more flexible, convenient, and less time consuming. And then to enhance learning efficiency, the teacher will also put out some online assignment for us to practice. And then the examination will also be take place via online platform. Uh, some of the teachers will occasionally have some live teaching or tutoring session via Zoom or VOOV to better interact with the students. Uh, therefore, so far I'm actually enjoying online learning provided by the school. Lab. Okay, next. Okay, right now I'm going to talk about uh, topics that most of you are interested of. So the career planning. So if you want to work in China, uh, how should you go? What should you do? So first, you have to go through five years of undergraduate education, which is the MBBS course or the clinical medicine course that I mentioned just now. And then if you want to go for specialty, you have to go through another three years of postgrad education. So during your postgrad education or after it, uh, you have to take one uh, licensing exam uh, called China Medical Practitioner exam. So after you pass this examination, you will get a license and you will be valid to work in private practices in China. But if you want to work in governmental hospital or public hospital, you have to apply or go through another three years of medical residency training. So. Uh, however, for this medical residency training, it is, the slots are limited for international students. So it's really difficult for us to get a place. So if you really want to get the medical residency program, you have to be very excellent and lucky. Uh, next. So just now I have mentioned about the licensing exam. So I'm going to briefly talk about it. So it's called China Medical Practitioner Examination. So it is basically composed uh, in two parts. So first is the practical part and the second one is the written part. So the practical skill test will be having three stops that test you on different contents as stated in the table. And then written test will be um, separated into two, test one and test two. And all the questions will be coming based on system and the range or the marks allocated for the for the, for the written test had already been recorded in the table uh, stated on the right. But just to tell you guys, because this content stated above was, as, was actually just a rough estimation and might change over the year. So you guys have to uh, check it uh, when the time goes lag. Okay, next. Oh, so just now I'm talking about the how to work in China. So now I'm going to talk about how to work in Malaysia. So like what I said before, uh, because Shanghai Jiao Tong University is actually recognized by Malaysia. So we when we go back to Malaysia, we don't need to take any examination. We just need to apply for housemanship. So after two years of houseman, uh, we will then follow the ordinary stage, uh, like contract HO, permanent MO, specialization, and also gazette. Uh, and if you want to choose some of the parallel pathway to go into specialties, you can also look for uh, something like MRCP as a truck. Okay, I will not talk about this in detail, but if you guys are interested in this, you guys can always uh, take a look at this. Okay, uh, next. Okay, and some of the people will also ask, okay, if I don't want to work in China, I also don't want to work in Malaysia, where should I go? So. The road is actually not fixed. That means if you, if you don't want to work in China or Malaysia, you can still choose other countries, okay? You can just go to other countries' website and check for the requirements, whether you need to take any examination or not. But most of the China graduates, if they don't uh, work in China or Malaysia, they will go actually go for UK or US because of the salary factors. So for UK, right, normally you will need to take licensing exam, uh, which is flat. But uh, as what I know, PrEP is currently cancelled, so might be cancelled, so, and it might be changed, replaced by another type of examination. So you guys have to check the official website for the, for the, for the latest update. And then same to US. Uh, if you want to go to US, then take USMLE. 
but the syllabus had changed a little bit. So same, you have to refer to the official website to check for the latest updates. Okay, so here is all the things that I want to present. Uh, so now I'm going to pass my mic to my teammate, Singyi. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chris. Hi, I'm Singy. After the introduction about the Shanghai Jiao Tong University and uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University School of Medicine, now let me show you guys the ways of application to apply SJTU and SJTU SM and the scholarship that provide. <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, there are three language teaching programs provide international students in SJTU, which is uh, in French, Chinese, and English. While the medical course only taught in Chinese and obviously the tuition fee in different language teaching are different. Here is the average exchange rate, earning B to ringgit. You can look out for the exact currency rate online. Okay. Next, for the application process of the undergraduate uh, program in Chinese, we only provide the application website and deadline. For the details, uh, you can uh, visit the official website for your, by yourself. For the application process for the undergraduate uh, engineering cluster program English, as well, uh, we also provide website and deadline only. Uh, and please visit the official website to check the latest news and the other details. Okay. Here we has, uh, have list the application materials and conditions for a Chinese dot program and English dot programs. The one listed uh, has uh, here are only the basic requirements for uh, for more details, uh, please refer to the official website. Okay. One thing to mention that international students only allowed to apply dentistry course and clinical medicine course. In this PPT, we only show you about the application website and the application deadline. You have to check out the details for the official website. Uh, or next, uh, I'm sure that everyone is concerned about the scholarship. So now let me introduce the types of scholarships and application conditions. And please also notice to the application condition and time. Uh, SJTU uh, provides four kinds of scholarships for international students to apply. Uh, please do take notice on the application methods as well. As to mention, when applying for the CGS, uh, that is Chinese Government Scholarship, you have to select Shanghai Jiao Tong University as first choice. While for the Shanghai Jiao Tong University Scholarship and Shanghai Government Scholarship, you are able to apply it when you register on the official website of SJTU. Okay. Here are some details of the scholarship. Scholarship for Chinese dot and English dot program are different. However, both are divided into three levels. The first class scholarship covers the tuition fees, providing uh providing living allowance, which is around remaining two thousand five hundred per month and accommodation fee. The second class are same as the first class, which covers the tuition fees, or uh, running B1000 accommodation fee and insurance, except uh, for the living allowance. But for the third class, it only includes a uh, running B1000 accommodation and insurance. Please notice that a uh, student can only enjoy one scholarship at one time. Okay. Uh, for the uh, undergraduate English and French program scholarship, uh, the second tier scholarship covers only 50% of the tuition fee, while the third tier scholarship covers 25% of the tuition fee. And this is uh, different from the third tier scholarship of the Chinese thought program. Uh, SJTU SM provide a uh, Shanghai government scholarship type A and type B. As you can see, the main difference between them is that the one headlight in uh, type A is not covered by type B. Uh, and please notice that the deadline shown is uh, available for year 2021 intake. For class 1, 
the scholarship cover exempt from a uh, full tuition fee and accommodation on campus provide comprehensive medical insurance and monthly living expense that is uh, roughly 2500 the thing you have to mention is that applicant that has uh, received any other scholarships offered by chinese government or organizations is not entitled to apply sgs Uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University School of Medicine also provides the uh, Chinese government scholarship. Uh, for the first step, you have to apply to the local Chinese embassy or consulate for Chinese government scholarship and get the certificate of sponsorship. And then to uh, apply to Shanghai Jiao Tong University School of Medicine for study. Those who are admitted will get the pre-admission notice provided by the School of Medicine. And the applicants should uh, then register at this website and finish the online application. Meanwhile, all the application documents together with the pre-admission notice by the School of Medicine should be submitted to the China Scholarship Council. Uh, and then uh, have two following steps. Okay. Uh, here are the contacts of SJTU and SJTU SN. And if you have further questions, please don't be shy and you may email to school and teachers will reply you as soon as possible. Uh, life in China is uh, very comfortable, mainly because there are many useful apps that can help us in daily life. For example, we can use Meituan and Olomo to order food or we usually use Baidu map or Autonavi to go somewhere. Even the people with uh, no sense in direction like me can go out alone. Okay. After living in China for a while, there are some advantages and disadvantages of studying in China, in my opinion. As I just said, the transportation in China makes uh, me feel the best. You can usually arrive your destination easily by bus or subway. In addition, as all the international students live together, we are able to learn different cultures together. Like uh, we can communicate in other languages instead of uh, Mandarin and English. In addition, we have our self-study room in international student dormitory. It is suitable for learning like in a uh, library. In addition, you have uh, many opportunities uh, to travel in China because the traveling apps uh, help us a lot to planning uh, the, my, our journey. I'm sorry. However, we may have to, to uh, strengthen our study in English, uh, as Chris just said, because uh, our medical costs are taught in Chinese. Here are some of the food expenses in China, and of course, different schools have different standards. Uh, and this is for reference only. Okay. Here are some, uh, some photos of Malaysians who are studying in uh, SJTU SM. The first photo is a very famous spot in Shanghai uh, named uh, Yu Yuan. It is very beautiful, especially during festival. We have also traveled to uh, Zhejiang before, and I remember that uh, we ran all day, and although it was uh, winter, it was a very unforgettable journey. Now, the last our international students often have dinner together. This is a picture of us having a meal with our Thai friends. You may notice that there are many parks in Shanghai and there are many activities such as Tai Chi and public square dance and so, so on. You can join them all the time. Okay. Uh, in general, life in China is uh, very wonderful and amazing. So I look forward to seeing you in SJTU very soon. Thank you. Now I pass uh, to Chris. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Xinyi and Ziwei, for all the informative sharings. Now we are going to help everyone to puzzle out some of the common questions that the pre-med students normally have. So first, uh, people, especially college and SM SMK students might ask, Okay, uh, I actually came from English background. So how can I adapt the Chinese study environment? Is it easy to learn in Chinese or not? Well, 
For this, I will invite my teammate Zi Wei, a medical student with A-level background, to briefly talk about this. So now let's welcome Zi Wei. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, for this question, right, uh, is it okay to come to go to China to study in Chinese summer when you are coming from an English background? Uh, in my own opinion, I think the answer to this question is definitely not a problem. Uh, as for me, because my mother tongue is Chinese, so uh, during communication is definitely uh easier. And for is it if you ask me, is it easy to learn in Chinese or not? I wouldn't say it's easy, neither will I say that it's very hard. Uh, it's not easy because uh, we all come from English background. During uh, our A-levels, we learn everything in English and suddenly you change everything into Chinese. Uh, it's definitely not that easy. You learn from scratch. So uh, you, ha you really have to put in effort. But it's not that hard also because... Uh, of the learning environment, of course, and our teacher is actually uh, very understanding because uh, when they are making their slides, they will put in the English terms beside the Chinese terms for us to understand better. So uh, it's kind of like learning in bilingual. So it's not that hard when you get people or uh, there's a lot of people around you that can always help you and you can always ask your teacher when uh, you, you don't understand anything. So... I actually think that um, just take it as a challenge and back the journey. Uh, so you can always em embrace bigger challenges than you think you are capable of. Uh, it will be very worth it at the end. So of course, uh, put in more effort when you are from an English background. Yeah, that's all from me. Thank you. Mm, okay. I'm totally agree with the way because uh, I always think that language is not a barrier for us to that prevent us from learning. Uh, but like I think as long as you're having passion toward medicine, so you can always give yourself a try. Mm. Okay, so just go just go on to the next question. So some students might also ask, if I'm afraid of blood, should I choose medicine? Mm, so my answer to this will be depends. Because uh, becoming a doctor requires a lot of passion. I think as long as you have a deep passion towards medicine, uh, then you can definitely overcome this problem when time goes. So normally people won't get used to this for the first time. But when uh, when you actually went through several times of practical sessions in School of Medicine, you will eventually get more used to this kind of thing. So it really depends on how much exposure you had experienced and whether you can accept this after all of uh, after all of the practicals you had experience or not. And then if you really don't like the dissection in your future career, you can always choose uh, not to be a surgeon anyway because there, there are still many specialties that don't need to perform surgery or operations. So uh, therefore, I really recommend all of you to, like as long as if you have passion towards medicine, then try to experience it first instead of straight away giving up on this. Uh, so... Next question will be, uh, some people will also ask, like, uh, will studying Chinese beneficial for my future career? And to this, right, I would say, of course, because first of all, doctor is a career that deals with human problems. Uh, so we often need to communicate and to socialize with others. So uh, knowing one language alone might not be truly sufficient, I think. Uh, if you know one more language, that means we are capable of communicating with more people with different language background. Uh, as Chinese is my mother tongue, so most of the time I find it easier for me to master new knowledge by studying in Chinese. Then with moderate English foundation, I would still be able to make the translation easily. So this had actually ensured myself capable of delivering information uh, bilingually, which improved my competence as a future doctor. So. Uh, in my opinion, uh, learning in Chinese will be beneficial and advantageous in future. future. So then the next one will be some people will also ask, is CGPA, uh, is CGPA important in medical school? And is the competition in medical school high? How should I adapt for it? So for this, I will invite my teammate Xinyi to talk about this. Okay, uh, for the first question, uh, as we all know, GPA is uh, important, but not only in uni, but 
also one of the main things that employers concern when applying for a job or apply for the postgraduate. Uh, reaching high GPA score is not the only target we need to hit, uh, in my opinion. Uh, because uh, other than GPA, we also need to communicate with uh, many patients in the future, like uh, just now Chris said. So our scientific research and uh, social skills do play a vital role such as GPA. Yeah, for the second question, is the competition high? How should I adapt it? Uh, yes, uh, it's quite big challenge studying in SJTU, especially uh, checking the medical cost. However, I don't think that is a big deal for me as I try to uh, make friends with it. A uh, positive competition between students, I think, is a good tool to, in uh, pushing us to work harder together in learning and getting harder high home marks. Uh, competition brings pressure, but the pressure helps us grow better, I think. So I think the competition brings more benefits for us, more than the pressure. Thank you. Mm, okay, so again, totally agree with Sinyi. So in my opinion, CG, uh, apart from CGPA, there are still far more uh, other factors that makes good doctor. And then competition, of course, is stressful, but it also brings improvement. So again, uh, next page. So thank you, Sinyi and Zui, for the informative sharing. sharing. I believe all of you had already gained something from us. Uh, and thank you, Premed Society, for helping us to organize this meaningful event as well. So hope that we can see all of you in SJTU in future at the end of the uh, today's event. So thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for attending tonight. We hope that you found the session really informative. Uh, we will now be answering some of the questions in the chat.
All right, we believe all of the questions have been answered. So once again, thank you so much for attending. Do stay updated and subscribe to our channel for uh, any future events that we plan to hold in the future. Otherwise, we will end the stream here. So thank you so much, and we hope to see you soon.